Oh, nice. Whoa. עוד יותר, יוצרי התוכן של ישראל. Welcome to the show, Gilly from Philly. Thank you I would for ask you where me. you're from, but where are you from, I mean, but... <laughs> You'd be surprised how many people actually stop me and they're like, wait, where are you from? No, they don't. No, I swear. There's no way. It happens all the time. There's no way. So this is, this is Gilly from Philly. Um, what's your real name, though? Gilly... Gilly Fle- Flea Cop. Yeah. But Gilly from Philly is much catchier. Gilly from Philly is her TikTok name, um, slash personality, basically, <laughs> at this point. Totally. Um, but Gilly, so happy to have you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Wow. How, how are you recovering from um, Porn Weekend? I think you can tell by my voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still recovering from screaming karaoke in the middle of the carom all night, but it was so fun. I have to hear about the party you guys had. Oh, oh my gosh. William and TLV had the most insane party. I have fun on um, Angle. At Goat, everyone. Speak Easy, Jimmy Who. It was phenomenal. It was so much fun. We had a special surprise guest from Maton Parrots, obviously, and Michael Rappaport, um, but it was amazing, and I'm just looking forward to the next party, which you'll have to come to next time. I have time. to. I have to. It looked so much fun. I you'll lived through the Instagram stories. Next time you'll come. We even did a Halloween, co- not a Halloween, a porn costume of... Uh, contest and this guy literally came dressed up as a harvard kid i don't know if you saw it no so funny it, it's definitely winning the poem contest oh my God. but it so was incredible funny. um so gilly tell us a little bit about yourself yes all right so i'm from philly i moved to israel i've been here five years a little bit more i originally came here on a type of peace corps program i came here to volunteer for the year it was like i'm just going to be here for a year by and ended up staying and every year just kept staying more and more um and yeah I started working in tech I opened my own company two years we can like deep dive together yes. um and right now my company is called Pink Chili so we do TikTok marketing for tech companies with my co-founder Noam and yeah I'm just like really a nerd in the startup world and marketing and tech and I'm excited to talk about all the fun tech stuff together because you also are a tech queen oh uh. I wouldn't call it. We'll call myself a top queen, but... <laughs> she is, she is. <laughs> so first of all, what inspired your decision to make Aliyah in the first place? Totally. So my mom's Israeli. She's okay. from Netanya. I literally joke that I'm Netanyati, and no one believes me, but I feel is it in my thing? blood. Yeah. What's, I feel like I go to Netanya, the, and it's like my hood. Like, What's I feel, the characteristics of being a Netanyati? I just feel like all my friends from Netanya are like down to earth, goofy, funny. Like I really vibe with that. Is that, an, is that a Netanya characteristic? Okay, down to earth, funny, goofy. <laughs> it's, like the, it's like the opposite of like falsani. Like it's really like on the car cut, you're down to earth, you're grounded. My, co- I, my co-founder about- is from Natanya, and that's why we're friends. I, like, felt her energy. I smelled it on her. No offense to Natanya team, but all I've heard about Natanya is that it's full of r Well, I'm going to change that right now, okay. and that's my hot take. Natanya is not full of r okay. and we're the best people. <laughs> okay, okay. That's, that's a hot take. That's hot a good take, hot take. Hot take, hot take, everyone. Take. Um, but, yes, my mom's from Natanya. She moved to America when she was 30, and she had me and my brother. And I was raised in a really, really Zionist home. My mom only spoke Hebrew to us. Very similar to you. You were raised yeah. by two Israeli parents abroad in America. Um, and I think just like hearing Hebrew at home and visiting Israel and just kind of being fed this love of Israel kind of planted the seeds. And I came here for the year after college thinking, I think the people that come here and they're like, I'm just going to stay a year. Those are the people that always stay forever. Always stay. But the people that are like, I'm coming to Israel forever, like 12 months later, they're back to that America. That is so true. I really that like, so I true. think if you put, if you take the pressure off and you're like, let me stay another year and try it out, eventually you, ease, you like ease yourself into it. So that's how it kind of all started. And I just stayed. And then you were working in tech. So tell us a little about, a little bit about that, getting into the tech industry here and then leaving to, and then also your TikTok career and then leaving all of that to start your own totally. company. I feel like I'm on a first date. Like, <laughs> let's, let's, let's get to my story. Um, okay, so basically I finished my year of volunteering and I studied philosophy in college. I had no idea that tech was a thing. Like, it sounds crazy, but I didn't even know what high tech was. I didn't know what VC was, nothing. I just spent four years studying philosophy and just like reading books and like laying in the grass on my college greens campus. And um, I came here, I volunteered and I was really looking for a job and I knew that I liked writing. And so I was applying to writing positions. I applied to so many tech companies. I got so many no's, just like, no, 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 no. And then finally, um, 
I got an interview at a big software company called Iron Source. And I remember leaving that interview and sending a voice memo to my best friend being like, I need to work there. Like I just felt this really, really strong attachment. I go home, I do their assignment, and then I get the email, sorry, didn't make the cut. I don't know if you know this full story. I don't know the story. <laughs> you didn't make it. And I remember I was super naive. I was like 21, 22, didn't really know much about like applying to jobs. And I was like, I'm just going to try my best to like fight for this job. And I remember <laughs> a week before I had a different job interview and they put me in the room with the CEO of the company. And at the end of the interview, they, they always ask you, do you have any questions for us? And I was like a silly philosophy girl. I was like, yeah, what's your biggest piece of advice for me as I'm starting my tech career? And the CEO told me like in Israel, if someone closes the door, jump through the window. Like no is not always no. So I remembered his advice and I was like, I'm just going to jump through the window. That's and amazing. I send them this like insanely aggressive wow. email <laughs> saying like, you need to hire me. I promise you I'm going to be the best wow. risk you ever took. Like I know I don't have experience, but I have hunger and I'm going to work my ass off. And that email changed their mind. They, they were like, she's hungry. She's ready to work. They were like, but we don't think you're a good writer. So we're going to hire you to be our social media wow. manager. And I just faked it till I made it. I never I owned no Instagram. How, wow. <laughs> yeah. And never knew anything about social media, marketing, nothing. And they just hired me. And I remember my first day at work, they were like, can you like Instagram story that thing? And I was like, yeah, no problem. I went into the bathroom and Googled like how to do an Instagram story. Like I knew nothing, wow. nothing at all. So that's how I kind of got into tech. That's a crazy story. Crazy. So to all our uh, listeners out there, if you got to know... Just jump through the window. Through the no, window. it's not no. We like you go to me straight up and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> it no, is never not. no ever. You can just convince anyone anything in any but situation. I feel like that's very un-American of you though. Yeah, because like Israelis, yes, no is not a no, but for Americans, no is usually a no. No, I think I like came here and like very quickly was changed that's into amazing. just like finding that like talk back, as they say. But so you were so you were working in tech, mm -hmm. uh, doing social media. And then you started Gilly from Philly, which is your TikTok, yeah. which I, I don't know if you remember this. I have a funny story. So Gilly and I met at a Shabbat dinner years ago. Years ago. It was like yeah, four, years, four ago. years ago. And we're sitting down at Shabbat dinner and she's on her phone on TikTok. And she's like, guys, I, I just posted this uh, day in the life of high tech. It's going viral. And I had, I had no idea what TikTok was at the time. Even. Yeah, that's um, my first TikTok. That's, so tell us about your TikTok journey, getting into that social media space and becoming like a well-known influencer totally, here totally. in Tel Aviv um so it's really funny <laughs> flashing back to when you were sitting there and yeah. I ran out I was like it's 50,000 views yes. already um so yeah so like, I never had social media growing up like I was the one girl in my friend group in college that just didn't have Instagram nothing like I was living under a rock and when I got this job in tech and I was learning about social media and I'm like studying philosophy like the way my brain works is I just need to understand everything and unpack everything and so for my two years at Iron Source, all I did was just learn, learn, learn. Like, well, how does social media work? What are these algorithms? Why do certain personalities succeed? Why do certain companies succeed? And I applied that to myself. And I realized that my, like, superpower was that I wasn't a social media person. I was really goofy and authentic. And I wasn't trying to be something that I wasn't. And basically, my philosophy was, I'm just going to pick up my phone and I'm just going to record what's already happening. I'm not going to, like, write a script. or I'm just going to, like, take my phone and follow around my yeah. day in Tel Aviv, my going to work, walking to what work. What you just said hits so close to home because I am the least social media person out there. I, before starting William and TLV, and still, like, I, I had, I still have no idea what I'm doing. Like, honestly, I had no social media background, to, like, nothing, n zero. I'm a finance Excel girl. Like, I love Excel. I love formulas. So, like you said, it's like just picking up and doing it and yeah. not having the background is so spot on, I think. And I think that's why you're so successful, too. It's when you follow your passion and you follow what actually genuinely brings you joy and you capture it, the content is always going to yeah. be good. It, yeah. You can, like, I always say content is energy transmission. Like, people can feel through my videos and I'm being real and authentic in every capacity when I'm happy, when I'm sad, when I'm excited. So, and I really want to get into your journey because I'm like, <laughs> obsessed in Noah's brand that she has built, the queen and the empire that she has. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I just started posting. Uh, I started doing like where to eat in Tel Aviv and how to work in tech and advice and all everything and anything that interested me. And I just so, slowly started to grow a nice following. And I think there was this really pivotal point when I was like, whoa, I have these two really, really niche skills. And then one was like really understanding Gen Z and TikTok marketing. And one was really understanding the high tech scene and working in a software company. And I helped Iron Source go public in their marketing and really like learning actual you know marketing and 
how does it work? What's marketing attribution? All that technical stuff. And I put those two together. And that's basically how my company started. My co-founder, Noam, who's from Natanya, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> She's the most incredible human being. I remember people... We were, and you guys met at Iron Source. met at Iron Source. She had just transferred to the marketing team from a different team. And someone came up to me and they said... They said there's a girl, Noam, joining our team. She's from Natanya. She's the Israeli version of you. And I was like, what does that mean? She <laughs> walks into the room. She's like, what's up, everybody? It's just like super Sounds crazy. Sounds like Natanya to me. <laughs> and, um, and I just like went up to her. And it was a few months later that we were sitting together. And we were like, let's go do something big. And we started Pink Chili. We're celebrating two years next week. We quit week. Iron Source. We quit Iron Source together. We were like, okay, we're going to leave together. We told our bosses together. It was a whole thing. We left. We <laughs> sat in my bedroom in Tel Aviv with like a notebook and a pen trying to like think of how we were going to go build a business. And now two years later, we're like an LTD. We just hired our first full-time employee. We have like 10 enterprise tech clients and it's really exciting. And on the way here, Noah and I were saying that quitting my really comfortable tech job was the best decision I think I've ever made in my life besides moving to Israel. So, Gilly, you yeah. should be the poster child, the poster face of like all of y'all success stories. Like, I want you on <laughs> Nefesh Benefesh, like whatever, like Israel, like ministry of, all, ministry of all of y'all. You need to be the poster child. <laughs> this is like the most insane, one of the most insane success stories of. I feel the same know, way about you, but man. Wait, also, you you made Aliyah five years ago? So well, I officially made Aliyah in 2020, but I moved yeah. here five years ago that's, in 2018. That's crazy. You freaking have your own business yeah, at yeah. this point in time. Yeah, I think like. And I, I like mentor a lot of new Aleem and people job seeking. And I think the try the window philosophy in which I used at Iron Source is something that I think was what got, has gotten me far is really not taking no and really believing in yourself and pushing. And I, I really want to turn it back to you and hear about <laughs> how you started this brand. I mean, no and I were on the bus on the way here and we were saying that like sometimes when you're building something and you're like so close to it, you can't really see what you've built. Like, you know, I built this company and like it takes it takes it like it's hard for me to step back and be like, OK, I built this. Right. Yeah. And I want to hear about like how you built Olive in Tel Aviv and TLV. Uh, so I actually, this is an interesting story. A lot of people don't know this, but I tried to start a reality TV show here for Olim Chodeshim uh, three years ago, right pre-COVID. I had a pitch deck. I tried contacting Cash and I made this big PowerPoint, cold called people, got zero responses, like no responses. And A dating I, show or just? No? Just no. Basically the vision was, um, and this is my idea, so if anyone steals it, just don't steal it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, put Ten Aleem in a apartment to, together in Tel Aviv, kind of like Big Brother, but let them leave. Like, t- take them on trips. Like, you make kif to Aleem. Like, see how they like bring characters, oh Japs, like all that stuff. Like, <laughs> go to me start a pni. Yeah, go to me start a pni. Go to Shalvata. See the creepy guys hitting on uh, <laughs> the American girls. Just like a reality TV show, like of the funny things that happen to Olim here. Um, so I had that idea and basically I was starting to accumulate content for that, like funny incidents on the street, like funny content in Tel Aviv. And I was just accumulating and accumulating on my phone. And then the real story is I turned 25 a year ago in December, last December. And I remember calling my parents, like crying to them. Usually I love birthdays. 25 was the first birthday that I, like it's, it's quarter life crisis. And it was really a quarter life crisis for me. Um, Call my parents crying, actually sobbing. I'm like, I feel like I'm doing nothing with my life. Like, I'm working in tech, and I love my tech job. I have nothing bad to say about my my job. I love it. I love Excel. I love finance. But I just, like, I feel like there's something missing. Um, and I had all this content on my phone. You know, you know what? I was just like, I'm going to start an Instagram account posting out all this content of my friends and I doing stupid things in Tel Aviv. Like if you scroll back, it's literally the first post is my brother and I playing beer pong in Tel Aviv. Like literally just like beer pong. Like we're in a college fraternity party. Just like capturing your life. Yeah, capturing my life. And then I slowly started posting and posting and people were like, that's so funny. This is super relatable. And I was just like, wow, this is a niche that um, there's a lot of demand for. And it just kind of started evolving into it. Um, And now it's like a full-fledged media company. Like, Yeah, yeah. You mean you have events and you have have podcasts. Yeah, it's been crazy. And to be honest, I still have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just going along with it. Like you said, I have no social, zero social media background. Um, 
and I'm rolling and they with just that. hit Aliyah and Taylor V just hit forty thousand Instagram yeah, followers. That's crazy, it's so crazy, and in, in a little over a year. Sometimes um, I think about like what does forty thousand people look like in our arena, and yeah. like if you just put them all together <laughs> and then all watching the same video is wild. It's crazy. It's crazy. So that's my my story, but um, yeah. I mean, you also work in tech. I also work in tech. I work at FinTech. um, And the company I work for is amazing. I've had an amazing ride there for the past two and a half years. I did financial consulting before, now in tech. Um, But yeah, it's, I think a lot of Olim are, who want to start their own business are very scared of taking that step. And I'm curious to hear what you would say to Olim who are at this point in time where they're wanting to start their own business, but don't know how and are scared of it. Because starting a business in Israel is not easy. Um, we can get into that. Taxes, everything. <laughs> they, It's not an easy thing to do. So what can you tell people listening if they're thinking of starting their own business here? And would you recommend it? Mm. Okay. So I would say the most important thing, and it's a piece of advice that, as I said, I'm a huge startup nerd. Like all day, every day, all I'm listening is to startup podcasts and meeting with entrepreneurs and really understanding more and more how I can be a better entrepreneur. And um, I think you have to have the right reason as to why you're starting a business. I think if you have superficial reasons, like I want to be really rich or I want to be famous, um, your stamina, you're, you're going to burn out because it's a lot of hard work. And I guarantee that after a few months and you're you know working very long days, you have a lot of stress and pressure, it's not going to drive you. But if you really, really have a passion and you really believe in what you're doing, you will go super far no matter what. And I think it's just about showing up. I think starting a business, no matter what, is a risk. In any business, no matter the profit margins, business models, anything, I think it's just believing in yourself and just finding a good partner. Like having a co-founder, for me, at the end of the day, I go you know, go through life with her and do it together. And I think picking the right person to start a business with and having a team and a support system. I listened to a podcast last week and it was basically these like Stanford MBA entrepreneurs and they were analyzing what goes into a healthy founder mindset. And they all kind of analyze the environment in which the founder is in. Like, is their home life good? Right? Are they eating healthy? Are they exercising? Are they spending limited time on social media and, and not, you know, having film? All these like separate variables that really go into having a healthy mindset. So I think just having a healthy balance. But in Israel specifically, it's hard. It's hard. It's really it's hard. It's hard. So what are some of the biggest challenges you faced as an entrepreneur in the digital space here and especially in Israel and how have you overcome that those challenges? I think specifically with TikTok marketing and I started my company 2 years ago and not many tech companies really took TikTok seriously. They viewed it as like this dancing, you know, girls on the beach whatever it may be and I kind of was sitting there in this like corporate room with like big decision makers convincing them and showing them the ROI on actually investing in this marketing channel. So I think that was really hard. I think being taken seriously sometimes as someone who's not Israeli that doesn't have the language. But I honestly, I, I, it might be a hot take. I really, really believe in the law of attraction. Like I believe in everything. If you're going on a date, if you're going to a job interview, if you're pitching a client, if you walk into the room and you really believe that you're the hottest shit out there, that they're lucky to be sitting with you and they're lucky to be having your time, no matter what, even if you're not a native speaker or whatever it may be, that confidence it's like transmitted into the room. And that's kind of like my biggest piece of advice is really believe in yourself, no matter if your Hebrew is bad, no matter if you don't understand how Masach Nasa and Karen Ishtamut works, none of us do. <laughs> <laughs> Just go in there and be confident and then you'll go far. That's what I do at least. <laughs> so so starting Pink Chili, first of all, tell us about the name, what inspired the name. It's, it's an f- interesting name. So I yes. want to hear the story behind that. And also tell us more about the mission behind the company. Mm -hmm. So Pink Chili, the name kind of symbolizes. So the whole company is about TikTok marketing and it's Gen Z. And Noam and I were both very bored by the marketing that was happening in the tech scene. And at that time, there was a TikTok trend. I don't know if you remember it, but it was like add a little spice and you would like take a picture and just like add funny Mm -hmm. versions of it. And so we were like, we need to add spice. Like we need to find a way to sprinkle spice over the whole marketing scene. And then we just named for like two hours. We did this exercise in which we just named every spicy Israeli or like any type of pepper. Like we were like, like <laughs> listing everything. And eventually we got the word chili and pink was very like Gen Z and we're female entrepreneurs. We really believe in that. We just hired our first full-time employee. Of course, she's a girl. Like it's very important nice. to us. Um, and yeah, so that's how Pink Chili started and the name and Spicy. what's what's the mission to what 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 does Pink Chili actually do? So Pink Chili, on a practical level, high tech companies will outsource their social media to us. So a big tech company will come to us and say, "Hey, will you do our Instagram?" or "Hey, will you do our TikTok?" and 
we'll make the strategy, we'll go and do film days and edit the content and post it and build them a community. Um, but the mission on, on a high level is to really add, and, and we use spice seriously, to add spice to you know, create content that stops the scroll, we say, like actually speaks to people, resonates with people. And I think it's largely influenced by my personal philosophy in social media that the more authentic you are, the better. And it's exactly what you're building to know. And I want to hear about you and what your mission is and how you've approached oh gosh, it. Because getting put on the spot yeah, here. I did. I'm a marketer. Was I'm not, reversing. For this. It's not my podcast. Welcome, everyone. I'm interviewing Noah today. <laughs> no, I think like I see from a marketing perspective, when I look at what you're building, I see a really, really, really clear voice. And I think a lot of companies struggle to, like I'll tell my clients, like I want you to imagine that your company is sitting in the room. What are they wearing? What's their favorite song? What food are they eating? What's their personality? Are they, you know, self-deprecating? Are they witty? Are they clever? And I feel like you've built this this persona that's like so tight and it's so perfect. And I want, how did you, did you think of it? Did you like make a strategy or you kind of just yeah. went with it? Like tell me about the literally, process. Literally still going with it. I have... The, the closest to strategy that I have, which maybe which maybe is good, honestly. You tell me, marketing guru, like, is it is it good that I don't have a strategy and I'm just kind of Whatever you're doing is working, but, so keep like, doing it. I don't know. Um, the closest to strategy I have is that every Saturday I sit down. I, I've learned, I think the biggest thing I've learned throughout this past year is to, how to say no to people because I love hanging out with friends. I love going out. I have FOMO. And I've learned that I have to start saying no to people in order to work on this. And I've started saying no to more and more people. And then Saturdays are my days where I work on this stuff because I have a full-time job um, where I just sit 9 a.m. with my friend Liot, who's helping out and is part of the team. And um, we Zoom my brother, who's in Philadelphia, actually. Oh, in Philly. So um, my city. Who used Besides to- Natanya. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we just work on content. And we have a content... I I have a content calendar, but I don't follow it. You just like so kind classic of me. Post. <laughs> yeah, like I just post whatever. I was like, okay, it's time to get organized. Have a content calendar, a content schedule, and I just don't follow it but Um, I think what you said like before is I think the most important piece of advice to building anything is saying no to things like yeah you have to like I've learned we've talked about this a bunch too like if I say no to someone I say yes to myself and everyone's gonna always be asking for favors and advice and help and this and that and like of course we're gonna help as much as possible but you can't burn yourself to keep other people warm exactly exactly so so definitely that's that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned. I'm sure there are many more lessons I'm about to learn. I mean, Marty learning, negotiation, all that stuff. But um, it's it's been fun. And honestly, just I always think about like what would I laugh at when I when I story something. And I have a very my brother is the mo- the wittiest person ever. I I hope he comes back to Israel and moves back here at all. Please move back here. Um, but Tall he, Philly is nothing special. Nothing special. Come back. Nothing <laughs> special. But he's one of the most brilliant. Like, you need a certain uh, sarcasm for this stuff. And he is so brilliant. And he knows exactly what people will laugh at. And he's the mastermind behind all the on-screen text. It's not me. Sometimes it's me. But he's also a big He's part like of the it. ghostwriter. Like, he's... Yes. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. Um, Who else is on the team? It's just me, Tal, and like Liat, my friend. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe that. It, I mean, no. do you like, do you see what you feel? Like, are you able no. to like, it's no, crazy. It's, and I'm not even, I told you this. I'm not like, it's like, it's hard. Like you said, it's hard to take a step back and see, but I'm also part of my personality is, which is the biggest blessing and the biggest curse that I have as Noah, as a person is that I always want more. Like mm-hmm. nothing is ever good enough for me, which is what's led me to doing like things that I would never would have done but it's also detrimental and that it's a it's a vicious cycle of always wanting more right right and, um, I but mean, we're working on it yeah, guys we're, working we're, working on, on, we're, we're working all work in progress but that's that's your superpower it's what drives you and makes you who you are yeah I think yeah. every every like business owner entrepreneur anyone that's building something has to be a little bit crazy I say to myself like, yeah to do this yeah so so we'll see um do you, but yeah do you view yourself as an entrepreneur no. Really? Not yet. Maybe ask me in half a year or a year, maybe us. Like, I have a specific milestone I want to get to with Aleem. Okay. Where then I'm like, wow, yes, this is a real business and a real, you know, all that. Um, Amazing. But, yeah, we'll see. I, I, if you ask me, I think you're 100% Aww, entrepreneur. Thank right? you. <laughs> we'll chat in six months again. Yes, and you'll yes. tell me how we'll you do feel a follow, We'll it, do a follow-up yeah. podcast follow in six up. months <laughs> and we'll, we'll discuss this. Um, <clears throat> so... 
working in the social media space, I mean, I've gotten to learn, learn and know a lot of social media influencers in the Israel scene, and you also know a lot of them. If you could collaborate with any social media influencer in Israel, who would it be and why? That is such a good question. And I have so many. All right. Well, I have to say, like, the, all of the American influencers, like, we're all friends. And I yeah. love them all. And yeah. I'm not I'm not going to say one of them because I know that, like, if we wanted to, we all could collab. So I'm going to go more the Israeli route. Don't I, say Maton Parrots. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I love <laughs> Our him. social media influencer. I love Yochanan Twina. Do you know him? I don't. He Do is. Do you guys know him? Yochanan. <laughs> Who's the... Oh my God, we need to all go after this and watch his videos. He's quite possibly the funniest TikToker in Israel, in my opinion. How many followers does he have? Probably like, has like 200,000 or oh, more. That's yeah, big. yeah, he's big. Um, he's just so funny and I just love his sense of humor. Uh, I saw him on the street one time and like fangirled. I was telling you, like, I don't, I see, like, I'll see a celebrity on the street. Like, I don't fangirl. Like, I just, hey, what's up? Like, when I saw him, like, my whole mouth dropped. So I would I would love to collab with him. I think he's so funny. Never is he on Instagram also? Yeah. Okay. He's very Gen Z. I just we'll, really we'll watch after. We'll yeah, watch after. Yeah. I love like the I like him a wannabe Gen Z. Like I missed it by a month. Um, but I love like these Gen Z Israeli TikTokers that you can just like tell by their videos that they're so cool. Like the, there was this one high school in Tel Aviv that like my bus goes by every day and I just see these Gen Z kids walking out. <laughs> I kid Gen you. Z Tel Aviv kids. No, Noah. Which I, are a different. It's a different breed. A different breed of I kid of kids. you not. Yeah. I have never seen cooler dress kids. Their cargo pants are so cool. <laughs> every single day. I'm like, I feel so not cool near you guys. And I feel like Yochanan represents that just like cool young Tel Aviv Israeli that just like doesn't try How hard. How old is he? He's probably like 21, okay. 20. Okay. He's well, in the army. We'll have to, yeah, we'll check, have to him check him out. Check him out Yochanan is my vote. Um, wait, speaking of, this is really random, but this, um, the Tel Aviv kids outside on the school, it's, it feels like straight up out of a, out of a movie. Like 100%. these kids are like, and they're all smoking cigs. Cigs. With, so with like a security 50. guard <laughs> of the school. I'm like, this would never happen in America. These 15, 14 year olds, 13 year olds even, literally smoking cigs with a security literally guard who's cooperating cigs with them. With these gigantic <laughs> yeah. headphones. Like, literally, the most, like, the bigger the headphones, every time I see them getting bigger, they're wearing the coolest cargo yeah. pants with their cool <laughs> shoes, smoking cigs. I'm like, you're 12. Like, where, like, when I was 12 so years old, funny. like, I was wearing, like, limited to, like, sparkly, like, little squirts. Like, I don't know how cool they are, but. It's so funny. That's what I have to compete with on TikTok. That's why I yeah. posted less because they really intimidate me. So speaking of being intimidated, <laughs> so in a world where social media can get really crazy and hectic and lots of competition and very overwhelming, how do you stay true to yourself and stay authentic? I think that's very hard right now to do with all the competition that's out there and always wanting to do this and do what they're doing. And like, how do you, how do you just stay authentic to yourself? Someone just told me the other day that you are the best in the world at being yourself. It's so cheesy, but like, really, if you have a strong core and you just know who you are, like really, like you know who you are and you know why people like you and you know your strengths, you just keep focusing on that. And honestly, my biggest tip is I'm still not a social media person. I don't follow many people. I don't scroll that much. Like I go on social media, I click posts, I share my content and I leave. Like I want to just be a creator. I try not to be a consumer, which is, you know, complicated in its own way. Um, and I think kind of really reminding yourself that you have a unique voice that no one else, no matter how hard they try, can't have. Like, they can't take that from you. So I think tapping into, like, what my unique voice is. And I also think just being vulnerable. Like, I think one of the reasons I was able to grow my TikTok, and I haven't really posted on TikTok the past six months because of the war and my business, but I think one of the reasons I did grow, and I, I do believe if I kept posting, I would grow it more, is that I shared every single thing in my life. Like, I remember I was speaking at a marketing conference and I had just gone through a breakup. And that day I had posted a video that I went through a breakup. And someone in the conference said that they don't think it's appropriate to share really personal things on social media as like a business owner. And I was like, I completely disagree. Like, of course, I'm not going to get on a live stream crying, eating my ice cream, like bawling my eyes out. But I think like showing that side of me and showing like I'm a real human with like different dimensions. And like I also get sad and I also get homesick and I also go through breakups. I think it really humanizes people. And like I feel like we're so quick to share like the fun Instagram stories. Like I'm out with my friends and the cup party I look. But like also sharing that like I, I remember sharing like a story being like I really miss my parents today. Like I live really far. I really miss my the amount of people po like Instagram DMing me like I also miss my parents like I also feel that way thank you for opening up about that like you're a grown-ass woman that's homesick that's okay that's normal right and I think people respect you more and feel more like relatable and close to you so I think 
the real, I think the real way to do it is just really being yourself 100% of the time. So what advice could you give to the Lehman TLV Instagram account since it's not a person? It's a, it's a brand. It's a brand. I honestly think, Noah, that you are slaying. You are, <laughs> you're engaging what you're doing. And we we were, I was telling Noah, my joke as a marketer is like this like bus test. Like if a person gets, God forbid, hit, if a business owner gets hit by a bus, does their business still, chas v'shalom, tfu, tfu, tfu. Uh, if a person gets hit by a bus, does their business and brand still stand the next day, right? And that's the difference between a small business owner and a brand and a company. And I think what Olive and TLV has built is a brand, really. People know it. People, you know, every single date, first date in Tel Aviv, I'm sure <laughs> your Instagram oh account is brought up every was, single day. It's funny you speak. I was sitting, I went out on a date a few weeks ago with this guy, um, and he's like, how do all the Olim know each other? Like, you guys have this community. I actually saw this Instagram account, Olim and TLV. They post hilarious content. I'm like, that's my account. He's like, What? He was like, I thought a guy runs that account. <laughs> I get that so, I actually really? get that so much. Just so you know. Really? I get that. What, the so, humor? Even like, businesses reach out to me and we get on a call to talk about like collaborations. And they're like, they literally say I wasn't expecting a girl. No like, way. Yeah. I guess it's a humor. I don't know. You t- because I do think you have like that Barstool Sports yes. flavor in there. Yes. It's like grungy and scrappy yeah. and raw. Yeah. And like, yeah. I can That's see my that brother stigma. comes in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the ghostwriter is like coming through. But um, I think like what you've done that I am just in awe of is not just build this digital crevice of the internet. It's this really like tangible, it, like the whole city of Tel Aviv feels it, right? Whether it's an event or your comedy nights or, you know, people are so, like walking in the street, they spot something weird. Like they know that they're going to send that okay, to you. And yeah. I think that is, it's like revolutionary. I think you've built something that no one else oh. has been able to. So you should be very proud of yourself. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Um, so what's next for you in Pink Chili? Like you've been living here for four or five years. Do you see yourself staying here forever? The big question. The big question that we ask every Ola slash Ola, who comes on the podcast? The big question. It's really hard. We need to start keeping track. Who says yes? Who says no? Who's a maybe? <laughs> Have like a, yes, like a whiteboard. Yeah. <laughs> and see who follows through with yeah. their work. <laughs> um, so I think for me, it's really, really hard because I just genuinely don't know. I have a life that I love here. I have a business that I love. I'm like genuinely really happy here. Um, but, but there's always a but. Big there's always but big but has landed. <laughs> but I miss my family a lot. I'm really close to my parents and my brother. They're my everything. Um, was raised in a very loud Israeli home. I feel like Israelis can relate. They see their parents every week for Khatishi. And it's hard not to see them for six months, sometimes more at a time. That's my one real thing that is uh, making me confused and, and kind of in between. My real goal is to become a billionaire and own houses in both countries and a private jet. I'll just go back and forth and that'll fix the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it'll just fix the, the problem. So I'm actually building another business right now. Um, Do you want to give us a little, uh, a little sneak peek? Teaser? Yeah, it's, uh, it's really not uh, anything I've done before, but it's really exciting. It's in the world of HR and customer support. Um, we're kind of Still in stealth mode, but launching soon. I'm starting it with Noah, my current co-founder, and my friend Dan. Uh, I think I kind of caught the entrepreneur bug, and I'm never getting rid of it. Like I'm just going to hopefully keep building, and I'm going to watch you too. You're going to keep building other (laughs) Instagram accounts and uh, your whole umbrella. Um, Yeah, so that's coming up. And I also applied to get my MBA, so we'll see how that goes. Where'd you apply? I actually applied everyone <laughs> to... I set, I set her up for that question. <laughs> yeah. okay? I really, I did. I actually applied to Let Me Practice. Hook, Hook'em Horns. Hook'em Horns. The, you, the University of Texas at Austin. The University of Texas We didn't plan Austin. this actually. But. I just got in two days ago with a scholarship into their business school. So this sweatshirt you're wearing is really giving me a little glimpse into what I could be wearing. All of do you think I would do well in Texas? That's the question. I feel like... I think you would do amazing in Texas. Okay. Yeah. Because like, I feel like if you can Austin. survive Israel... Yeah, Austin's Austin. very fun and yeah, very yeah. Like, out there. So you would do amazing. What do you think about like the cultural differences of Israelis and Texans? Like, Do they have any overlap? Texans are just more nice <laughs> and Southern. It's like Southern hospitality. Very yeah. kind, very welcoming. Like... No offense to Israelis. Y'all aren't like that. (laughs) Y'all. I'm going to start saying (laughs) y'all. I'm going to come back next year. um, Y'all it. So don't leave us. 
don't leave us. Do an MBA at IDC or Tel Aviv University or Bar Ilan or wherever. Stay you here. know what? I the more and more you know, I think about it. It's a very very hard decision. I like. I'm really curious to like come back here in a year and see where I am geographically and professionally. Uh, what about you? Are you here for good? Is that also a complicated I'm going to use the Gilly response. I am very happy here. I have a very <laughs> fulfilling life. But. But. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, wa- I, I don't know. I don't know. Again, I'm really close to my family. Five kids in the family. All super, super close. Most of them in Texas. One in Philly. Um, but. <laughs> the eye roll. <laughs> For those listening, no one just gave the eye roll of the century at Philly. I'm not going to take offense to it because I have really no closeness. You know what they say about Philly? What? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's hard. I mean, family is a big part of my life and they're not here. So I think a lot of people don't talk about this homesickness. Yeah. It's really a real thing. Yeah. I was just telling Gilly also on the way here, I'm so homesick. Like I am so ready to come back and go to Texas for Passover and be with my family but I feel like there's this tough. clock yeah. that you just yes. like, feel like I'm ready to yeah. go home and it's funny I was on the beach yesterday and I was sitting with a friend and she was like you know Gilly I'm only homesick when I'm at my tech job when I'm sitting there and it hits me that I'm like actually living and working here because when you're on the beach it's with true. your friends you're like it's la true. la I'm in Israel and then you're like sitting like doing a project and like running data and you're like oh wait I'm actually like a civilian <laughs> of Israeli society like I actually pay bills like, I, and she only gets homesick from like nine to five and then as soon as she leaves, leaves she's like she's fine it's yeah. so true and it's I'm like so honestly me too when I work is when I feel like yeah it's so true okay so this has been amazing and now unfortunately unfortunately we're gonna get into the most exciting uh, part of the podcast you know it hot, hot takes. takes hot takes discussion and the first one is so relevant and it's actually from last, it, these are all from last week's hot takes um the first one is saying you work in high tech doesn't matter anymore Ooh, what do you think in the context of a date do you think in general in you know general. high tech used to be the thing that everyone was like oh i work in tech i work yeah. in high tech it used to be such a hot and sexy thing yeah i I disagree. I kind of agree. You you agree? I agree. I want to hear why. I just don't think it's hot and sexy anymore working in high tech. What's hot and sexier? Is there like a new competitor that like... I don't... uh, Like if you tell me I work in a really, really small startup with like... Three and twenty people or less, I would be like, "That's hot." But, really, yeah. really. But like, oh, What's I just hot work about at, that. that I it's work like at your building from zero. I yeah, I think that yeah, I just think working in high tech is the new norm now, and it's just nothing special. It's like everyone works at Rapid or Monday or whatever, and like no offense, <laughs> companies, but just nothing special. It used to be a special thing, I think, a few years ago, and now it's just not. It's so why so, do you think it matters still? I think like. It's become, like, same argument, but flipping it. I think it's become such a norm that, like, it matters. It's, like, that first vet. Like, it's the first check. Like, you match with a guy on an app. Like, if he's not working in high tech, <laughs> like, like it's the what first... are you doing? <laughs> oh, my God. It's the first sorry, filter. Like, yeah. yeah. And no, no, no. I'm being funny. Of yeah. course, there's amazing, beautiful professions. There are, you know, a lot of trades out there. But I think that, I don't know, maybe I'm just, like, a super tech person and, like, I find myself talking about tech more than not. So I like gravitate towards it. But I, I think it's super cool. And especially when you're like at Shabbat dinner and you turn to the left and you turn to the right and like this guy's building like farms for like random drip irrigation and this guy's doing fin. Like it's so cool. I'm like fascinated by it that all these people are building. I don't know about you, but the Shabbat dinners I go to, it's all like the same companies. <laughs> There's a joke. There's the big four in America. Anyone who's from America knows what I'm talking about. Like it's Deloitte. PwC, um, Deloitte, KPMG, EY. Oh my god, my accounting girl, he came out of me right now. <laughs> um, and here, there's the big four of Israel. It is Rapid, Monday. Um, like AppsFire, no, maybe. Yeah, AppsFire, and there's one more. What am I missing? Rapid, Monday, there's, AppsFire. Oh, Moon Active. Moon no, Active. and Playtica. Playtica, Not, yeah, not yeah. AppsFire. Those are yeah. the big four. Those yeah. are the big four. Yeah. Everyone, if you're sitting in an Olish Shabbat dinner, Olim Shabbat dinner, 90% probability that one, the person next to you is working at one of those companies. That's that's it's very so true. true. So yeah. it's just it's the norm now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, next hot take. I actually don't mind the con- constant construction. It shows progress. Ooh, oh, I do not agree, no, honey, I, honey. It is not true. <laughs> I can't hear myself think. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote, 
whoever posts, I know who posted this, needs to get deported. And I really hope he's listening because <laughs> you need to get deported for saying this. It does not show progress. I, okay, as like a, an extreme optimist, like I can see the beautiful side to like we're rebuilding and there's so much growth. And every crane you see, you, you see this like the, the economic like positivity of what's happening in the ROI. It's just like personally very annoying to me. Yeah. Like I just can't. Hot take. Hot take. That's a hot take. Okay. Olim don't have any Israeli friends. Mm. I kind of feel like that's true. I kind of feel like that's true also. I mean, I you mean, and me both have Israeli friends, yeah, but to be but honest, we're, we're like half-bloods. Yeah, yeah. When you're a half-blood, you have Israeli friends most. Because yeah. it's your cousins and then your cousin's friends. You can just kind of like hang out. I think we need to do a segment on this podcast on how to make friends with Israelis. Like how Aleem can become friends with Israelis. Honestly, because, I feel like we need to do that. Like we need to instruct people. Yeah, because Aleem want Israeli friends and then they... They're, they it just never happens. I'm gonna say a hot take right now. Okay. I feel like it's easier to make Israeli guy friends for Aleem than Israeli girlfriends. For sure, because Israeli girls are difficult to make friends difficult with sometimes. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> politically what I, correct. That's exactly <laughs> what I was gonna say. No, um, but like that's I'm sorry to bring it back, but like Noah, my co founder, is like my best friend in the whole world. And like the when you start leaving Tel Aviv, I think it can be easier to make friends with Israelis. I yeah, I agree. Okay, last one. Sorry, guys. Um, Israelis have shit taste in music. I disagree. <laughs> I agree. I disagree. I agree. I agree. Wait, you agree? I feel I like agree. every time I hang out with an Israeli, they're playing a song that like I never heard, and I'm always loving it. So, no, I, I maybe I just don't hang out with the right Israelis. Then yeah, maybe you're at the wrong <laughs> Shabbat dinners hanging out with the wrong Israelis. Like, come hang out with Always me and my Always play the friends. songs that, like, they're so late to the game with music. But no, but, like, also. they have good taste in Israeli music. Maybe Israeli music, but. I feel like Israelis, music? like, love, like, Eminem. Like, <laughs> is that true? <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys confirm? I feel like Israelis have, like, five artists that they're, like, all obsessed with. It's Kendrick like Lamar. Milky, what's that, guys? Milky Chance. Like, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> the Stolen like, Chance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, like, Eminem. And they, they love like, that Dennis Lloyd. Dennis Lloyd, is that his name? Oh, yeah, he's Israeli. Yeah, Dennis yeah. Lloyd, yeah. There's, like, a few artists that they all really, really like. Yeah. Okay, that's a really okay. good hot take. Hot that's take. interesting. Hot take. But that's it. That's our, that was our final hot take. Love um, it. Thank you so much for coming. It was amazing. Gilly from Philly. Check her out on TikTok, even though she's kind of been inactive, but yeah. she'll be back on I'm it. I'm back. I'm coming back. She's coming back. Thank um, you for having me, Noah from Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that. We're going to start you. using that. It's her that. new nickname, everybody. <laughs> We're going to start using that. Um, and yeah, stay tuned, guys, for the next few episodes and also Comedy Night, April 9th. I um, hope to see you all there. Audio Tale. יוצרי התוכן של ישראל הוקלט באולפני אדיו המשווקת את ספוטיפיי בישראל